So the IB budget's two hours for this, but let's see what we can do in seven minutes. You don't actually have to know what Hess's law is, but just three ways to apply it. So if I had two equations at the top and I want to work out how to get the energy for the third equation, well, I'm allowed to do certain things to the top equations. I'm allowed to double them, triple them, half them. I'm even allowed to flip them round. And when I add them up, they've got to equal the bottom equation. So if I flip the, that one around there, and now the reactants on the left-hand side there and the products on the right-hand side, well, something interesting has happened after I flip that round, is that if I cancel out what's on both sides, that half will cancel with one of those to give me a half of those, and then I add up those two equations, I get the bottom equation, the carbon and the half oxygen on the reactants and the carbon monoxide on the products. So I've manipulated the top two equations. Now I did flip H2, so I have to do something to the delta H value. So if I flip it, I'm going to reverse the sign, in this case make it negative. Then add everything up, and that should give you the delta H for your target equation. Now we're going to do this a couple more times, but that's a simple one. And occasionally the IB have asked you to remember this one. This is a medium difficulty one, so we've got three equations, and the target equation is at the bottom there. So I have to work out the delta H for the target equation. So what manipulations can we do? Well, there's two carbon tetrafluorides and only one there. Hmm. So if I double that, in fact I had to double everything, if I'm going to double one thing I have to double everything in that equation, and double delta H. Well, I fix that part. Four hydrogen fluorides versus two you know what, I've got to double everything there as well. Which also means I have to double delta H. And we're not quite done, because that's on the wrong side. So remember, I'm allowed to flip around the equation. But if I do that, I have to change the sign to a plus, because it was a minus before. Well, let's cancel what appears on both sides, where appropriate. These things have a nice little habit of just falling into place if you do what you think you should do, which is just double, triple, flip. It all tends to work out. Yep, the reactants are good, and the products, they're also good. So now you have to sum the delta H's for the initial equations, and that will give you the delta H for the final equation. Don't mess the signs up. Oh, there's a decimal point. It should be 537. I don't know how that dot got there. The final number's correct, though. All right, that's about as hard as we'd ask you to do. Three equations turning into one. But here's an evil one. Why not pause it and have a little go? Welcome back. So how'd you do? Hopefully, you doubled the top, doubled and flipped the second, and tripled the third and got that number for the answer. The second way to apply Hess's law is with an enthalpy or energy cycle. Oof. Many people don't like these. So if A turns to B and B turns to C and C turns to A, delta H overall for that process is zero. So if we put some numbers in for delta H, they've all got to add up to zero for that process. A more complicated process, like this, oh, that looks a bit yucky. Well, the rule is, is that the clockwise arrows add up to the anti-clockwise arrows. So that three orange arrows equal the two yellow arrows. The clockwise arrows add up to the anti-clockwise arrows. So if I put some numbers in again, for delta H, that gives me a delta H value of 12, 11, excuse me, in this case. I ran out of fingers. Here's one that you're more expected to see, perhaps in multiple choice. That's quite simple again. Clockwise equals anti-clockwise.
So those two numbers equal the third number when you add them up. Let's try a more tricky looking one. Don't be put off by the parallel arrows there, it's still the same rule. Let me put some delta H's in. Clockwise equals anti-clockwise. So 1 equals 4, 3 and 2. And let's look at this evil one that I made. Oof. Now if you don't know organic then this is meaningless to you. But just try and follow along anyway. Hydration of ethene, that makes ethanol. So that's delta H1. I'm burning my ethanol, assuming complete combustion. That's the default assumption. And that's delta H2. Now I'm going to add three oxygens to make it balance. I don't like that. I think it looks bad, but that's, that's how the IB likes it as well. I don't like that though. And combustion of ethene, well let's go down there, adding three oxygens again. And that gives me delta H3. That is a Hess cycle. And if you wanted to work out the relationship, delta H1 and delta H2 equals delta H3. And finally, well I cobbled this together on my computer. This is an energy level diagram. Just pause it and have a little look. It kind of makes sense. You can see uh, what's supposed to happen here. The total value of the red numbers equals the total values of the green numbers when you add them up. So uh, that's just another way of looking at the same problem.